Good afternoon, everyone. It is Thursday, January the 9th, 2020. It is currently 1.22 p.m. Central Time. Now, I don't know how you feel about Thursdays, but for me, Thursday is one of my favorite days of the week, and there's a very good reason why that is the case. You see, here in Texas, at 11 p.m. Central Time, all the new music drops on all the music streaming services like Apple Music, Spotify, etc., etc. And as a lifetime music fan, that's a big deal. You see, there was a day that I would have to wait till the next day, wait till the record store opened, and then go in and then, well, look at all the new music and determine how much money I had and could only buy maybe one or two LPs, CDs, depending on, you know, what format I was buying at the time. And I couldn't buy, obviously, I could not listen to everything. I could not buy everything. I could just go in and look and go, oh, man, that album came out. Oh, that came out. Well, I've got <laughs> I've got money for one today. So that's it. And I would leave with one and I would cherish it and treasure it and listen to it over and over and I still have, see right here to my right is a, a case full of CDs. I still have CDs in the closet next to it. I have LPs. I still have CDs and LPs that I bought way back in the 80s. I got LPs that I purchased in the 70s. So I'm um, a lifetime music fan. So for me, Thursday night, 11 p.m., all the music drops and I can listen to it all. So I always get excited. It's always a wonderful thing. Now, I know some of you. Some of you, you're not a music fan. I understand that. And I know music, to talk about music within the realm of Christianity is to just ask for controversy. I'm not here to have a debate about music. I'm not here to engage in any of that. What I want to do is look at a song of an artist whose new album drops at 11 p.m. Central Time tonight. It's a, a highly anticipated album. She is very well known. You may have heard of her. Selena Gomez. You may know, know her from the Disney Channel, or you may know her music. Well, her new album drops at 11 p.m. tonight, at least here. I know some of you have to wait till midnight, wherever you are. But 11 p.m. Central Time for us here in West Texas. And everyone is, you know, there's, gonna, there's a lot of buzz about the album, a lot of talk about the album, a lot of anticipation. And you're, you, you're pretty much sure to hear a lot about, about it um, if you pay any attention to what's going on in the world. And um, if you have anyone in your house who listens to Top 40 Pop Radio, you're, you've probably already heard some of the singles from the album. And one of the ones that is getting a lot of attention and a lot of airplay, I've heard it a bazillion times, is a song called Lose You to Love Me. Lose You to Love Me by Selena Gomez. And I've heard the song a lot. But today when I heard the song, all of a sudden something clicked and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, she's singing it from one point of view, but if we consider what she's saying, we could almost look at this, if we'd, ha we'd have to flip it up a little bit, but we could almost look at it from a theological and biblical perspective and it should really be challenging to us as Christians. Now, I'm not, this is obviously not her intent. Her intent is she's talking about a relationship with a guy but there is something in it that really made me think, how would we, if we were to take this song and flip it a little bit, how would it apply to us as Christians? So let's first look at the lyrics uh, itself. You can hear this song online if you want, um, but you know it doesn't matter if you like the song. That's irrelevant. Just let's consider these lyrics from a theological perspective. I mean, this is the Theology Central podcast where we take the time to look at our world from a theological perspective. And trust me, if you have teenagers, there's a very good chance they know this song. Even if you don't want them listening to it, there's probably a good chance they know it. Here are the lyrics. Again, Selena Gomez, Lose You to Love Me. Just listen to the title. Lose You to Love Me. All right, let's see what she's trying to say here. Here's the first verse. You promised the world and I fell for it. I put you first, and you adored it. Set fires to my forest, and you let it burn. Sang off key in my chorus, because it wasn't yours. I saw the signs, and I ignored it. Rose-colored glasses all distorted. Set fire to my purpose, and I let it burn. 
You got off on the hurting when it wasn't yours. We'd always go into it blindly. I need to lose you to find me. This dance, it was killing me softly. I needed to hate you to love me. To love you, to love you, to love you. I needed to lose you to love me. To love, love, to love, love, to love, yeah. I needed to lose you to love me. Now here's Selena Gomez. She's in a relationship. There's a lot of uh, of speculation about who this song is about, but we won't get into all of that. She's singing this song and she's stating, look, she was in this relationship with this guy and she adored him and she was doing everything for him. And at some point she began to realize, some point she realized what was happening. And this is what she, she came to realize. She needed to lose that individual to find herself. She needed to hate that individual so that she could love herself. She needed to lose that individual so that she could love herself. She needed to hate in order to love herself. She needed to lose this individual so that she could love herself. Now, I've heard the song a thousand times, and we could look at this and go, okay, how, how does this, you know, how do we relate this song from a Christian perspective? This, you know, and we could get into a whole discussion there, but I just want to flip it completely. I want to leave what she intended, and I wanted to, to flip this to our relationship with God, because the Bible seems to speak very clearly on this. For example, John chapter 12, verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So we have to lose our life in order to find life. We have to hate our life in order to keep it. Now, this same concept, I'll go back. There's some other scriptures we can consider. Uh, If we go to Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and his children and brethren and sisters, yea, hate his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, Selena Gomez is talking about hating this individual so that she could find herself, love herself, losing this individual so that she could, you know, that she could love herself. This is all about Selena Gomez putting the emphasis on herself. But in a roundabout way, if we think about this, this is the way it's supposed to work for us as Christians. We are supposed to lose ourself so that we can truly love God. We are to hate our life so that we can truly love God. We have to, we have to decrease. We have to disappear. We have to die. We have to lose ourselves, lay down our life, take up our cross, hate our life, hate everything. If we truly want to love God, if we truly want a right relationship with God, we have to lose ourselves. Now, the name of this song is Lose You to Love Me. The Christian, and I want you to listen to this. So so the name of the song by Selena Gomez is Lose You to Love Me. The Christian idea, we must lose ourself so that we can love him. We must lose ourselves so that we can love him. We must die to self so that we can love him. We must hate our life so that we can find eternal life. And I think that if we're honest, we don't really do that. We don't, we want Jesus. We just don't want to lose ourselves. We want Jesus, but we want to love our life. We want Jesus, but we don't want to hate up our life. We don't want to lay down our life. We just want Jesus to come along and make our life better. We just come, we want to come along and have Jesus be there for us, to kind of be our backup to be there to get us into heaven. But that's not the way we are called. We are called to something more. We are to lose ourselves so that we can love him. We we are to lay down our life. 
Now, she's all about, hey, I've got to lose this guy so that I can love me. I've got to hate him so that I can find me. I've got to forget about him. And and I, and I we could talk about that from a relationship point and how that should work. And there's a lot there that we could discuss and we could really break down the lyrics. But from a theological perspective, if we flip it a little bit, it's very powerful. So let me ask you, have you lost, are you losing yourself so that you can love Christ? Are you laying down your life so that you can love him? Are you hating your life so that you can truly find eternal life? Every single day, we have to lay ourselves upon a cross and crucify ourselves. Every day, we must seek to decrease. And if we're, not, if we're honest, we, we have, this is, I hate to say this, we have a tendency that we, we just want to use God so that we can love ourselves more. We just want to use Jesus so that we can find ourselves. We just want to use Jesus for the betterment of ourselves, for the exaltation of self, for the the guarantee of eternal life, for the hope of peace. But that that Christ calls us to something different, losing ourselves so that we can love him, laying down our life, hating our life. Something to consider. Something to consider. Again, the song, Selena Gomez, Lose You to Love Me. I think for Christians, we're to lose ourselves so that we can love him, that we can love Christ. All right? There's a lot of different ways to say it. And I know I repeated that a number of times, but I want you to really think about that. Forget... I don't, I'm not here to get into an argument about Selena Gomez and whether you whether the song is good or bad. I'm that you're gonna miss the point. I'm, I want to use this for a theological perspective. Think about it. Think about it from that perspective. All right, I'll stop right there. I just wanted to do a, a quick little recording. Um, I'm getting ready to eat lunch and I had a few seconds and and well, I just heard that song and I'm like, you know what? This For some reason, it clicked to me today from a theological perspective. I I was looking at it from a relationship perspective, but all right, I'll just stop there. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Let me know what you think. I love to get your feedback. All right, everyone have a great Thursday. If you are a music fan, 11 p.m. tonight, new music. If you're not, perfectly okay. Not everyone can uh, like the best uh, thing in the world. Okay, I'm just joking. All right, all right. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so very much. And uh, hopefully it gives you something to think about. Kind of a little spiritual meditation taken from a, well, a pop song that's airing on radio stations all across the country today. Probably going to be played a thousand times between now and 11 p.m. tonight. But there's, there's something to it. So, yeah. Meditate on this. All right. God bless.